So a little bit about uh, engine calibration, a couple things I like to keep in mind. Um, we recalibrate the, uh, the, the, the needed tables uh, to work with the new hardware. Now, typically on a, on a nice, lotuses are nice and simple these days. Um, they kind of grow more complex, believe me. Um, but those, those tables are typically ignition timing and uh, fuel tables, volumetric efficiency tables, cam switch tables, um, all those we, we touch. Um, there, there's others as well, but um, we'll get to that in a little bit. A uh, couple things we keep in mind is to keep the vehicle safe. You know, you don't want exhaust systems that are going to fall off after two track days because it's just too hot, the engine's running too lean or anything like that. So you got to remember about uh, the temperature of the engine. Uh, that's probably the most important part of this. Um, a couple things we do with the Lotus, uh, with this, uh, the ECU uh, reflashes we have for the Lotus are to expand the table sizes. Um, I'll show you in the next slide. Um, that Lo as, as they come from Lotus, uh, things like the ignition timing table, the fuel tables, they're only using this green box, which is reasonable. But um, we found that we have great improvements by allowing the table to be this white box and giving a lot more resolution over the RPM and the load. So this is a uh, load in including boost pressure. So this is going to go up to a couple times what the engine can hold as far as, as uh, you know, maybe up to about 12 PSI and then uh, 0 to 8500 RPM. Um, they fit all that in here and we found by increasing that table uh, size the resolution gets a lot closer. We can place more RPM points in the middle and it makes the car drive a lot smoother and you can tune each part of it a lot better. Um, it's actually noticeable. All the guys that have uh, that have been in Chanu's uh, green Katana 2 uh, lately have all said the same thing and that's the car is super smooth and it's, uh, it doesn't hiccup because I spent a lot of time, I put over 100 files in that car getting it right um, so it works pretty well. That's, that's one of the benefits that we've we've added to that and it really makes a difference. Um, okay, one sec. So uh, here's some of the items we look at, um, just to kind of go through a, a bigger list of those that I look at when I'm, when I'm calibrating a car. Uh, obviously the power and torque, that's usually the main idea why we're even doing it. Someone, uh, we add a supercharger to it, you put a different exhaust on it, you want the cam at a different point. Um, first thing we look at is power and torque. We get that, we get, you get that on the dyno. Uh, we spend time tuning in the ignition timing, the fuel, uh, where the cam switches. Um, but we also look, you know, we got to make the thing drive around the block. We don't, I mean, even a race car, you want to be able, you don't want to be bucking and snorting and, and all this other stuff. So you want the thing to idle. You don't want it to stall every time you come to the light. And um, so you, you look at idle quality, uh, how linear the acceleration is as you go through the gears. Cars that surge, just, I mean, they're, they're very frustrating because uh, you never know what you're going to get. Um, and then uh, also things like uh, the AC performance. Um, you know, does the car stall when you click the AC on? Or uh, does it just get uh, very, you know, uh, rich and throw black smoke out when the AC is up? That actually can happen. Um, we do cold starts and hot starts to make sure that the fueling uh, is right. Um, something I call paddock mode, which we uh, which we um, did a lot of work on in the, in the Aerial Atom recently, uh, she was Aerial Atom, um, was Paddock mode is basically if you take your foot off the off the, the gas pedal and just let it creep around uh, through over you know, hills and up into uh, uh, like driveways and things like that. Can it, is the thing surging? Is it moving around? Is it, is it so everything so aggressive that you can't drive it if you can't can't be in it? Well, that's paddock mode in, in my book, and that's basically how you get around the paddock without touching the paddle. And, and, and that should just be a nice smooth drive. It shouldn't buck and snort and, and do all that. So we really pay attention to that. Um, some of the other things, uh, exhaust temperatures, detonation, uh, that's, that's also something that we're really looking at when we're looking at power and torque, that's the number one thing. Um, these cars have a really good detonation system on them, a knock sensing system, and um, you can easily overrun it. So you, uh, you really have to watch it to assure that the, the safety of the engine, as well as the, that will also lead into huge exhaust temperatures, because it'll pull so much ignition timing out that it's firing very late and then your cat gets hot, your whole exhaust is red. So um, we watch that. 
That's probably the most important thing we look for in these cars. But they have a very good detonation system, so it's, it's good to work with. Um, transient fueling, that's basically, you know, back in the old days, they called it accelerator pump. It's basically when you step on the gas, is the fuel there ready to go? The, the air meter doesn't react fast enough in, in these. <coughs> in these for a, a quick jab at the throttle, so you have to program it into the computer. Um, the transient fueling, so it, the fuel gets there at the right time. Because if you're waiting for the air meter, it'll, it'll just take too long. Uh, and then diagnostics, uh, unless we're absolutely asked to turn something off, um, diagnostics are as as Lotus intended them, or, or as Ariel intended them, uh, any manufacturer, we leave them on. Uh, they tell you a lot about what's going on. If you've got troubles, uh, the diagnostics are your friend. Um, they're there to help you. Um, we don't have cars running around with lights on, things like that. So that's, you know, that's, that's just something we're not. We try to make it as OE. We want it to pass emissions. We want it to pass readiness codes. And that's got to be leaving uh, the diagnostics intact. Um, I wanted to say a couple words about Octane. Um, a lot of people know roughly what it is. Uh, it's basically the, the quality of the fuel. Uh, here in California, we have 91 Octane. Um, and, uh, but a lot of people are looking for uh, more power, more, uh, you know, a lot more performance out of their engine. Um, I basically mentioned this for track cars, because a street car, we, we tune it for 91 Octane, and it runs right on 91 Octane. Uh, track cars allow um, the user to, uh, the customer, to get a lot more performance. And I'll show you a slide in a little bit of what you can, what you can get out of just the almost only Octane. Uh, I say the 91 Octane box because it, you basically have to run decreased emission time, ignition timing. Uh, and you've got to do a lot of fuel quenching, which is basically putting extra fuel in it to cool the charge down inside the combustion chamber. Um, that loses power, but it's safe. So, um, so for track cars, I highly recommend the, the 100 octane or, or, or a higher octane. Uh, we mentioned some about powertrain durability. Um, a lot of times, especially when we're talking, it doesn't matter what engine it is. Uh, today we're mostly talking about Lotus and Ariel Atom. Uh, there's other ones we're talking about as well, but um, this pertains to any. Uh, and that's when you get to a certain power level, probably well beyond or a little beyond what the manufacturer specifies. Um, you know, you're really looking into getting into built engines and built transmissions. Um, this car is a great example, probably. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but it's even true in our Ecotech, uh, which is the same engine as the Ariel Atom. Our silver car out there has a built engine. It's built at GM Racing. That's where we get our long blocks. Um, Chinoo, uh Sector and, and Eric has done uh, transmissions as well. Uh, here at Suspension. And uh, it's really something that once you get into power uh, and you spend a lot of time on the track, it's really something that street motors just aren't strong enough. They're just not built to do it. So um, it'll do it for a while, and there's a slope to it, and you'll find yourself where you need to um, you know, put stronger parts in. It's, it's not like there's anything wrong with it. It's just too much power for the strength of materials. 